this is my sewing machine that I got for free off of Craigslist. It is a Singer clone, deluxe made in Japan, a precision built deluxe made in Japan. It's a very bare bones machine. It's straight stitch only. Um, we can go from six threads an inch to, uh, well, just about zero or infinite, depending on how you're counting. Um, back here, there's just a little, um, Morse sewing machine motor. It's a 15th of a horsepower AC DC one amp. Um, so nothing, nothing too impressive there. So let's see. I'll try to show the thread path. This is going to be a little hard to film. Comes along from the back. Yeah, bad lighting, but the bobbin is down in there. This doohickey sets the foot pressure. So push it down. That's tight as it'll get. Then you push down the outside and it pops up. This guy here is neat. Changes the height of the feed dogs for the that are underneath the, the foot and front. You can go normal, silk, and tack. When it's on tack, they actually don't come up at all, which is a little bit weird, but uh, it means that you can do free form sewing. You can sew in any direction just feeding by hand and you don't have to worry about the the um, the dogs getting in the way. So you can do that patterns for quilting and that sort of stuff. Alright, let me take off some of the covers and I'll start showing you the insides. So the motor turns this outer pulley here. Now nothing in the sewing machine is actually turning now because the sewing machine drive is actually engaged by this knob which clamps down so now the sewing machine is engaged sorry this is all handheld okay let's lock that down in there there's two pieces in the back you can see one is a crank that goes up and down and one is a fork on a cam which wobbles left and right in there, there is a thing, and that, the angle changes. <laughs> the camera shades the light I need. So the block slides back and forth in that slot. And now this, that's my threads per inch adjustment, um, changes how that block rides. So that block goes back and forth, but now that thing's on an angulation. So it makes that rod go up and down rather than just straight back and forth. And if I push the re so now it's not moving at all actually. So it up and down just goes back and forth. If I turn that all the way the other way, puts that at an angle, when it goes back and forth that rod is now can't really tell, but pumping up and down. And if I push the button in the middle, it changes the angle of it again, and now it would be running in reverse. You see that angle, the block moving back and forth. So that's the back of the machine. That's how that works. So there's just a crank and a fork back there. This so this whole tube is essentially empty on this machine. There's nothing in there in the upper part. In uh, fancier machines, that's where they'll put the um, the cams to make them zigzag or all that stuff goes in here. But this machine doesn't have any of that stuff. So it's just a tube for that shaft to go through. That shaft comes through. Let's see. Let me stand this. So it's just a tube for that shaft to go through. I'm having to turn the sewing machine in all sorts of weird ways to get the light right. So I have to hold the camera in an odd direction. So hopefully you, I'm getting all the footage in the right direction. So this is the other end of that crank of the main shaft we saw in the back. This is the arm 
that runs down to the needle and that runs on a crank and that crank goes around and around and the needle goes up and down just straight up and down because this machine doesn't have a zigzag feature oh yeah there you can see it so in this ring that disc and some to point with so so this is the end of the sh the crank and in that that's a ring and there's a cam groove that runs around this pin goes in there and pushes back and forth and that sets that arm going up and down at the right time depending on how that cam is so that's how that part works really hard to see. I'd take it apart more, but then it all fall into pieces, and then you can't really you can see it even less. Uh, so, this is the bottom of the machine. So I move this all around. I'm turning the, the main drive. This bar that's going uh, this bar is going up and down. It's attached to the crank on the main shaft I showed earlier. Um, it runs, this is a fork on this side, runs back and forth, and that makes this shaft turn, and that shaft runs the, the bobbin, bobbinator thing that swings back and forth, what do you call that, the bobbin hook? Um, so that's how that shaft works. This shaft is hooked to the thread or the stitch length so right now I've got it at the highest stitch length so that's moving not very far but it's moving back and forth and if I turn that all the way the other way now it doesn't move at all because my stitch length is zero my stitches per inch is infinite so this piece controls how far those feet move the little dogs that come up and pull the fabric along so this controls how far they move now part of this rod goes down to here and controls that bobbin this other, this other piece comes up here and that controls when they go up and down so as this turns that controls how they go up and down now if I turn the um, the foot height adjuster thing now they go they'll go up and down less there's some slop here in this connection now see that's that slop happening so that slop means that there's less uh, the feet come up less the little dry feet now if I completely disconnect that see this shaft moves and the other piece this piece doesn't so now the the feet are staying down uh, as I'm moving let's see let's get focused so that's moving feet are not moving so now I can engage that over slides a pin over and now it's all hooked together so now those feet are going up and down so these are the feed dogs that I was talking about so right now Oh, and right now I'm going backwards. So now they're going forwards, moving along at a good pace, going up and down. Now, if I turn that to, now they'll just go back and forth. They're not going up and down, because I turned off the, um, the feed dogs. And now if I turn down this, the thread, the stitch length, they'll move a shorter and shorter distance. Over here, we have our bobbin winder. It's pretty simple. This thing just clamps in, pushes in, this rubber wheel against the back there, and then that whirls around at a gazillion miles an hour, wraps up the thread. Um, I think the thread is supposed to go here, around there, and up to a bobbin that you put on there, and it winds up. Uh, then when it gets full, it bumps against this piece, pushes it away, or stops it from spinning and we're done so just a really incredible 
machine. All the little pieces, solid metal, everything. Um, and like I said, this thing was free. Uh, so this is the inside of the speed controller. Um, you push on this little thing, this arm with your knee, and it swings this lever over. This swings over to cross. Yeah, seven speeds. Well, six low speeds, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and full speed ahead. So, nothing fancy at all, just different resistors in here. You can almost, let's see if you guys can see. Um, the resistors are like springs almost. And you can see the ones that are lower resistance, the coils are further apart. So there's less distance there, less, less resistive wire there. Then as we go down to the higher and higher resistance ones, the coils are closer and closer together, um, meaning longer path for the electrons to run around, so, um, so more resistance. Um, this thing does smell toasty after you sew for a while, so um, not exactly confidence inspiring, but um, hasn't caught on fire yet, so maybe at some point I'll make a better speed controller for this thing, but that's well down on the list of projects, so. This didn't quite make sense to me until just now, so the needle's coming down, right, it's made a loop, let's see, how, where can you see that? It's picking up, yeah, let's see, let's get a different angle. So now, the hook, the hook has picked up the piece of string that comes down from the needle. It's going to pull it and loop it around that bobbin, slides through and back up again. Now, it looks like it just brought a loop over the front. So, without the light, this little arm here is what's moving that hook. But that's isolated from the back of the bobbin. The back of the bobbin is sitting, it's hollow there. So, the thread can sneak around behind, all right? Hook is back, now on the other side, which we're not gonna see, the, it's made the loop, it's hooked the thread, it's pulling it around. Can we see the thread coming? You yeah, see the thread's coming, it's going around that whole bobbin. So it is actually passing the whole bobbin through and then back up again. And then now, on the other direction, there, and, Passing that whole, the whole bobbin through the loop. F first I couldn't quite picture how it could possibly pass the whole bobbin through the loop because it's mounted in that case. I was thinking, well, it's gotta, it, how can it possibly do that? But it does it. Um, let's see, let's take the needles down, it pulls up, makes a loop, that hook catches it, rolls it around, back up, and back and forth. So it does that. That fast and it doesn't well, it doesn't often mess up. So pretty darn amazing. This is a type 15. Um, the type 15 was I'm not sure exactly when it was invented, but you can look it up if you want. Um, one of the most popular sewing machine designs, probably the most popular copied and copied and copied and used for ages. Um, it changed the outer the style of the casting, a few of the little controls, but the, the Type 15 straight stitch machines have been around since sometime in the 1800s. So I don't know if anybody's actually making them these days because there's so many of these now used. I mean, you can get, I got this one for free off of Craigslist and I routinely see them for 30, 20, 30 dollars. So if you want one of these, I mean, they're 
no frills, but uh, fantastically made machines, just an incredible mechanism.